Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to solve another example regarding primary and secondary path of equilibrium. Uh, we solved one example with the rotational spring, and now we are going to calculate with the transitional spring with the same element. Two rigid bars are connected at point C, for example, and then they are connected to the spring. Let's do it. The same rigid bars are connected at the midpoint. At point A, a hinge connection, and at point B, we have a roller. And at point C, this time we have a transitional spring with the coefficient of k. So the length of rigid bars from A to C L and C to B is assumed to be 2L. The system is under the force P and we have the reaction force at point A equals to P in the opposite direction. Now the same principle, we have sketched the deformation. Theta and the other side, theta over two, and this is delta. Delta horizontal at point B is the same as what we calculated L minus L cosinus theta plus 2L minus 2L cosinus theta over 2. And we can factor L 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. And we can write down the energy will be minus P times delta horizontal B and it will be minus P times L 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. The next step is calculating the Potential energy in the spring, which will be 1 over 2 k delta power by 2. So if we look at A to C, the bar is rigid and after rotation, we have the same length. And here this is delta and we have the angle of theta. So sinus theta will be delta over L and as a result, delta will be L sinus theta. If I substitute delta with the calculated or determined L sinus theta, it will be 1 over 2 K L sinus theta power by 2, which will be K L 2 over 2 sinus 2 theta. Now I can write down total potential energy W plus V will be KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta minus PL 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Again, like previous example that I explained, first we want to have a dimensionless solution for this example. As a result, it is easier if we go with the assumption of sinus theta is as same as theta and cosinus theta or 1 minus cosinus theta is as same as 1 over 2 theta power by 2. So then I can rewrite the equation of pi will be KL2 theta 2 over 2 minus PL 1 over 2 theta power by 2 plus theta over 2 power by 2. I can simplify KL2 theta 2 over 2 minus PL 
3 over 4 theta power by 2. Now, run pi by respect of theta will be KL2 theta minus 3 over 2 PL theta equals 0. Then again, I have two answers. Theta is 0 and the other one P will be 2 third of KL. So I can name this 2 third of KL as P0. Now we can come back to our equation. Pi theta was KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta minus PL 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. And then I can make the first derivative by respect of theta will be KL2 over 2 2 sinus theta cosinus theta minus PL sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2. It should be 0. So if we look at the equation, here we can see the sine of sinus theta over 2. Now we can take the first derivative of pi by respect of theta. It will be KL2 over 2, 2 sinus theta, cosinus theta minus PL, sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2, and we equal it to 0. So this can be written as KL2 times two sinus theta over two, cosinus theta over two, cosinus theta minus PL, two sinus theta over two, cosinus theta over two, plus sinus theta over two, equal to zero. Now, we have sinus theta over two. I can factor this. And also I can simplify y in L. KL 2 cosinus theta over 2 cosinus theta minus P 2 cosinus theta over 2 plus 1. We have two solutions. First one, sinus theta over 2 equals 0. And as a result, theta equals 0. This is called primary hat and the secondary will be KL 2 cosinus theta over 2 cosinus theta minus P 2 cosinus theta over 2 plus 1 equals to 0. In this case, P will be KL times 2 cosinus theta over 2 cosinus theta divided by 1 plus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Remember that we assumed 2 over 3 KL to be P0. If we divide this equation by P0, then lambda will be 3 cosinus theta over 2 cosinus theta divided by 1 plus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Lambda represents P divided by P0. It's dimensionless. And this equation gives us the secondary path. Now we can sketch this uh, secondary path by MATCAT. 3 times cosinus theta divided by 2 times cosinus theta divided by 
1 plus 2 times cosinus theta over 2. And theta 0 to p over 2. And now we can plot it. So here is the uh, secondary path of this system. Now the next step is to calculate if the system is stable or is not stable. For that reason we need to Take the second derivative of the total potential energy. I take the second derivative. So it will be KL2 cosinus theta cosinus theta minus sinus theta sinus theta minus PL cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. I can simplify this KL2 cosinus 2 theta minus PL cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. And we are willing to find out where it is stable. As a result, I put it greater than 0. So for the primary path, theta is 0. As a result, it will be KL2 minus PL times 1 plus 1 over 2, greater than 0. And then it will be KL2 greater than PL 3 over 2. Or if P is less than 2 thirds of KL, then it's stable. Reminding that 2 over 2. 3KL, we assume it is P0, so P over P0 representing lambda should be less than 1. For the secondary path, KL2 cosinus 2 theta minus PL cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 should be greater than 0. As a result, P should be less than KL times cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. Again, as far as we are looking for a dimensionless value to a sketch, I divide both sides with 2 over 3 KL. So the left side will be lambda and less than 3 over 2 cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. So in the regions that lambda is less than this function, then it will be stable. Lambda theta 3 over 2 times cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 theta over 2. So here we can see that for from 0 to p over 2, lambda is greater than that function that we calculate for the stability. As a result, it shows that the system is unstable. So if lambda is greater than 1, also it is unstable. Here we can change the value here to be, for example, 2 to be more 
Okay, here it starts from one. This is lambda, and this is theta. So here we can see that it's completely unstable. I can sketch it with the common illustration. negative theta positive theta and this is lambda representing p divided by p zero so this is the value of one and then here this is If we want to write the equation, this path is unstable. This path is also unstable. This path above 1 is unstable. And here, this is stable. That's all. So in this example, as you noticed, uh, we faced with the unstable situation after increasing the load and losing a stability unlike the the other example that we solved earlier so after tiny deformation the system remains stable but for this example it was unstable in the next example i'm going to put a perturbation to see how it would affect losing stability. See you soon. Thank you.